Now, the most flagrant example of this is seen in neurology. We've been studying patients with a disorder called anosognosia, where a patient has a right parietal damage, stroke affecting the left side of the body, complete paralysis of the left side of the body, including the left arm. This person is quite intelligent, engages in a conversation about politics, can play chess with you, and so on and so forth. But then you say, what about your arm? Does your left arm work? And the patient says, oh, it's fine. It works fine, right? So here's a patient who's completely intelligent, denying something perfectly obvious, like the left arm being completely paralyzed. In extreme cases, you show his left arm to him or her and say, what is this? He says, oh, it's my mother's hand, or it's my father's hand. And you say, well, why do you think it's your father's hand? He says, well, it's big and hairy, so it must be my father's hand. So here is somebody who is perfectly lucid and intelligent holding this absurd belief that their left arm is not paralyzed or belongs to somebody else. In fact, I saw a patient the other day, and, and, and she said, my left arm, this arm doesn't belong to me. Uh, it's not paralyzed. It's fine. Okay. Then I said, touch your left shoulder with your right hand. And of course, there's no problem. The right hand is fine, and he does that. Then I said, touch your right shoulder with your left hand, and he does this. Now, that's amazing, because it shows that somebody in there knows she's paralyzed. Okay. This is an absolutely striking example of inconsistency in belief. Now, you may think this person denying paralysis, or denial is a very rare neurological syndrome, but not all of us here. But in fact, it's extraordinarily common. All of you here, most of you here, engage in denial all the time. But let me give you a little proof of this. Somebody recently conducted a survey asking people, Everybody, are you above average or below average in intelligence? 98% of people say they are above average in intelligence. And this is mathematically impossible because it's obviously a Gaussian curve. And what it shows is half of mankind is in denial about its stupidity. This was painfully evident in our last presidential election, by the way. OK, so uh, now let's go to get to the neurology. And one, of the th one, of the group, one group of patients we have studied is Split brain patients or commissurotomy patients. These are people whose corpus callosum has been cut and anterior commissure and massa intermedia whenever encountered. So essentially, you're, taking a, you're doing a karate chop right through the head and creating two human beings in one body, in one skull, two spheres of consciousness. Now, many experiments have done on, been done on these people, and I ask myself a very simple question. OK, you've created two people here. What about their personalities? Do they have different personalities? What about their aesthetic preferences? Does one like blondes and the other like brunettes, for example? One like chocolate and the other like vanilla? What, what happens? So we tried these experiments. And what we did was we had to first train the right hemisphere to communicate with us. In fact, the right hemisphere can read simple commands, simple words, simple sentences. And then you ask a question and say, point to a box, yes, no, I don't know. Because it can't talk. The right hemisphere cannot talk. But it can comprehend simple semantics, simple questions. Left hemisphere, of course, can talk, so you can present boxes, yes, no, I don't know. So we asked, for example, are you at Caltech? And the right hemisphere pointed to yes. Are you on the moon? It said no. Are you, uh, uh, are you um, in California? It said yes. Are you asleep? It said no. Then I said, are you a woman? And the patient was male. And he pointed to yes, and then started chuckling and laughing. So at least the right hemisphere has a sense of humor. Okay. <laughs> okay, so now comes the big question. What if you ask, do you believe in God? So I said, do you believe in God? And the right hemisphere went straight to yes. Right? I asked the same question to the left hemisphere. Yes, no, I don't know. It went to no. Right? So here's a human being whose right hemisphere is an atheist, and left hemisphere, on the other hand, <laughs> believes in God. And this finding should have sent a tsunami through the theological community but barely produced a ripple because it raises all kinds of profound theological questions. If this person dies, what happens? Does one hem? <laughs> Does one hemisphere go to heaven and the other go to hell? I don't know the answer to that. <laughs>